Hi, I'm Jay Lewis, here again with the shortcuts. This time with a step-by-step -step configuration of the RED Able TV Online Receivers. This video tutorial is being edited having in mind first-time users with a not yet modified Able receiver. However, it is also a need-to-be-watched tutorial if you do a factory default or need to troubleshoot some common problems. So let's begin by turning your TV on. Now using the HDMI cable, connect your ABLE receiver to one of the HDMI ports that are available on the back of your TV. And look at the HDMI port number where you are connecting your receiver because you will have to select the same port number on the TV screen with the input source button that is located on your TV remote control. You may also find this button on the TV frame and depending on your TV manufacturer it could be located on the top, on the bottom, in front of it, or in one of the back sides of your TV edges. In our example we'll be using HDMI 1. Now connect your receiver to the electric power and if you select the correct input or source on your TV, you should see the ABLE receiver booting up on your TV screen. And after completed, you should see an interface similar to this one. Your next step would be choosing the connection to the internet if you haven't done it yet. Your ABLE TV online box come ready with a built-in wireless antenna and an ethernet port to be hardwired with your router. If you choose the direct cable connection, you will notice that after connecting your AVO box to a working router, the app updates will start automatically. However, in our example, we'll be using the wireless connection to force these updates. Remember that you can also start the Wi-Fi connection from this menu which by the way, it's only visible if no modification has been made to the AVO receiver and if it's not connected to a working router through the Ethernet cable. But like I said before, I will be using the wireless setup from the main menu so you can know a different shortcut. To return to the main menu, use the navigation arrow in the AVO remote control and go down and click on Done. Now, from this main menu, click on Settings. And then click on Language to select the language of your preferences first. For this example, I'll be using English. So I'll leave it what it is. Now, to connect to the Internet, click on Wi-Fi. And in the next window, click on Add Network. Now select the network name that you want to be connected and to avoid mistakes, on the window that pop up before entering the password, go down and check mark the option Show Password so you can see the password as you type it. Now return the pointer to the password box and press the OK button to activate the virtual keyboard. Now start entering your password and after you finish Click on the exit button to hide the virtual keyboard and then go down and click on connect. And if the network name and the password that you selected were correct, the package installer will start updating right away. Otherwise, go back and verify or correct any error and try it again. If there was no error, just wait for the update to be completed and then go back to the previous menu by pressing the exit button as many times as needed. Now you should see the server option that it was not there before. Click on server and you will be able to see the MAC address that you will need to give to your service provider. Then your service provider should give you back a server or portal address that you will need to attach to one of the server options on the left. If you already have that information, click on server 1. And in the window that pop up, get the pointer inside the box that is in front of the server URL and click OK to enable the virtual keyboard. 
Then input the information as it was given to you by your service provider. When finished, click on the exit button to hide the virtual keyboard and go down and click on credentials if it's required by your service provider. Some providers may not need that information as it's already attached and validated through the MAC address. But if needed, you will need to show and hide the virtual keyboard to interact between the username and password. Otherwise, just click on connect. Now you should see the synchronization and channels updating. If the channels are not sensing, verify that the server URL address is error free. If you verify it that the server URL is correct but the channel guide is still failing to load, then you must log into your account if you do have access and reauthorize the service or ask your provider or reseller to do it for you. After successfully sensing the channel guide, click on the exit button to go back to the main menu. Once on the main menu, navigate between the categories, for example, live TV or videos on demand. I'll choose live TV. Now, depending on the provider you have, you may notice that some live channels are already grouped by categories. So it's time to explore these channels. Make your pick and click OK once to preview the channel and OK again to watch it in full screen. Anytime you want to return to the guide, the previous menu or the main menu, just click on the exit button as many times as you need. And this was all for the Red Able TV Online Basic Configuration. Look at my channel for other tutorials relevant to this IPTV box as how to activate and configure additional applications like Cutty, factory defaulting, and common problem solving among others. I hope this video has helped you with your IPTV project. If so, please give it a like and share with others your results or suggestions in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe and to come back for more here at the shortcuts or to shortcuts.com. Goodbye.